This episode of The Sleepcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our, our seasoning would take your barbecue from good to great. With summer right around the corner here, why not get yourself a, a seasoning or two or three or the whole or the whole hog over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue.com? That is Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Uh, three great sets that you can look at over at the website. I mentioned the whole hog, one of each of the great seasonings that the Mad Canadian has developed in his mad science lab. Or you can go with the sweet heat, which is your your sweet and spicy. Um, Combination includes the Four Horsemen Discord, Old Fashioned, and the Two Border, or the Just Send It, which is the versatile, I like to call it like the beginner's beginning um, seasoning package. S&P Bud, the Snoring Heat, Cajun, and the Smoked. Can't go wrong with any of those um, box sets over at themechanicbbq.com. Don't forget to use that promo code SLOOPCAST10, SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off. Your entire order, Mackinney Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This episode of the Sloop Guys also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based micro roaster, fresh to order, fair trade certified, USDA certified organic, based out of Perrysburg, which is just outside of Toledo, Ohio. Talk a lot about their coffees, but Kyle, did you know they also have limited run coffee mugs? They have two available right now, or rather uh, one available and one coming soon. Uh, One is the 2021 Dylan the Viking Poet Mystic Mug, which um, you're just going to have to look at it. Just go to ironbean.com and look at it. I'm not going to try and describe it to you. And the other one is the Some Give All Memorial Day Mug, uh, the 2021 Memorial Day Mug. And, you know, as you know, if you're... If you've ever listened to this show before, the Iron Bean Coffee Company is a veteran owned company. So, you know, Memorial Day, obviously taken very seriously. Um, so go ahead, jump over to ironbeancoffee.com and check out those mugs. Uh, once again, that is ironbeancoffee.com. Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. How's it going, YouTube? How's it going? nomad in our discord chat just nomad got so question. far got a question for everybody okay now that now that it's spring and summer's right around the corner here what are you drinking what are you drinking right now oh i i have to like do a podcast and edit a podcast then uh, so i'm i'm sober <laughs> we're <laughs> we're 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 sparkling water right now that's that's what that's what's happening to jared at the moment Jared's got some H2O, Nomad's got some juicy IPA, and I got myself a good old old fashioned here. I do love a hazy IPA. I yes. uh, I do love a juicy IPA. Uh, this sort of these late spring and then into summer beers are some of my favorites because that's like when all the juice and haze heavy IPAs come out, and I'm a fan. So I, I eat at a rest restaurant um i know did this real quick i ate at a restaurant on saturday jared uh-huh. and local one and they had a they had a really interesting beer um it was a they called it akuna matata okay uh it's it's a it's a uh it's an ipa but it was very what they call it i had here hints of Mandarin, orange, pineapple, grapefruit, and elderflower. It wasn't half bad. It was definitely more like a summer, summer IPA beer. Yeah, it kind of, uh, Jack Yeo's has a similar one called the Lost Marbles, mm-hmm. which is one of my favorites. Um, and Wolf's Ridge has a summer one that is like that as well, but I'm blanking on the name at the moment. Um, it's not out. None of these are out yet, but yeah, it, they're all great. But Kyle, we really need to get you. You got me started talking about beer during the bonus segment, the YouTube bonus <laughs> segment. What is wrong with you? We need to start the show. All right, let's do it. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Well, welcome to the Slipcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing right over here, Jared. 
whether that's, because even though it even though it's the wasteland here, it's it's all right. How are you doing, Jared? Yeah, this is a uh, wasteland episode number two, I believe. Mm. Uh, I think last week we officially opened the wasteland, uh, but that's OK, because uh, we've been kind of waiting on the wasteland a bit. Nomad asks us uh, <laughs> in our um, in our early, early asks Luke Cat's question. Are we out of the wasteland? No, yet? we're just getting in. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah this is this is where we have no football happening because we kind of go into the season then we go into like the coaching cycle and draft talk and transfers and then before you know we're in spring camp and then the draft actually happens so we we can keep like we can stay out of the wasteland for a while uh until like the draft ends and then then it's basically all recruiting from here on out don't forget about basketball too. basketball helps bridges bridge that gap uh, between football and like spring football. So, but yeah, we're, we're officially in the wasteland now, but it's fine. I've been really sort of waiting to talk recruiting again. We haven't talked recruiting in any sort of detail in a while. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting back into that again. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we do have some other stuff to talk about before we get into that, however. Yep, absolutely. Some things that's not not football related, but tied to football, though. Uh, first of all, um, trying to not go into being political or going to politics. That's because that's not what we want to do here. But this is is that this does involve this the facts. football program, though. Uh, Governor Dewine does no um, does announce that the um, the health mandate will expire. On June second, so what does that mean? Stadium capacity, mask rules will be at the discretion of Ohio State. And from everything that I keep hearing and Jared hearing too, I really expect a full stadium come this fall. Uh, Gene Smith is on record saying that that is their goal. It is their goal to be at full capacity. He's not promising it yet, but I think he's. I feel like he's like just butting up against announcing it. And and I, I feel like. I think really they're probably just waiting to make sure that now that all the rules are being lifted, that there isn't some sort of spike or maybe some sort of new variant that is, you know, whatever. I, I think they're just sort of holding off on announcing it until like mm -hmm. maybe the last possible second, I think would be my guess as to what they're doing right now. But. As long as I would say, I would honestly say as and law as long as like some sort of new variant doesn't show up that is bypassing the vaccine, even if it's only in a relatively high percentage of people, I think we're looking at full stadiums again. Yep. You know what? More importantly, to well, maybe not more importantly, but equally as important, Jared. What's that? The second weekend in June or July. Excuse me. The second weekend in July. Home opener of the new crew stadium being at full capacity. Potentially. Yeah, well, I, I'm I'm not about giving I'm not about giving the crew free uh, press coverage right now. That that's where I'm at right now. We'll see yeah. how what this happens with this logo so, and still, them still, Yeah, the Jared team. and I still not happy with uh, the owners right now. We don't have time. Sure there's a lot of crew fans because I'm going to keep emphasizing crew because they are the crew. They've always been the crew. Always will be the crew. We don't crew. have time. Kyle, I want to get into it. We don't have time. Uh, we don't have time. We just need to keep moving. We don't have time. I, I The Nordeke said, which is one of the biggest fan unions in, in crew soccer, said that they're going to be meeting with the team on Monday, which is the day that this is being released. And we'll see what comes out of that. And yep. until we see what comes out of that, I think it's best that we just uh, we move on. We do have... Uh, right. I, I do feel the need to talk about the the issue with the massage therapist. Um, we had heard news this week that Ohio State had some sort of big press conference or press release or something coming. No one knew what it was about. Uh, Ohio and that's, State and that's, actually that's did do a good job for once, keeping a tight lip on things. I feel like from a PR perspective, they nailed all of this, which is not a thing I think I've said about Ohio State in a very long time. Yeah, that, that's that's one thing that's always 
scary. Anytime that something just always comes up and then you start hearing rumblings, oh, there's going to be a PR release, but then you don't really hear anything. You're like, uh oh, what did Ohio yeah. State do? Or what did a player do? Or is there sanctions coming up? That, that I mean, that's the first mindset that always come to One mind. One of the too. things I was worried about, there is some real ugly news come out about Bo. Yeah, thank you. Nomad uh, beat me to it. Some real ugly allegations come out about Bo Schembechler this week. And then like the next day is when we heard about this press conference happening. So, you know, not that it would have directly affected Ohio State, but no one wants to hear. You know, we, we all hold, you know, not not that Woody was a perfect person by any means, but, you know, no, no one wants to see their heroes drug. And, you know, so that was a thing we worried about. But as it turns out, um, there was a massage therapist in the Cleveland area who was per Ohio State um targeting players um I, I will also say this before i get into this um i am mostly going to work off of what ohio states and it wasn't ohio state's report by the way they they suck they sought sought out that's the word they sought out a third party to do the investigation so this isn't just ohio state's word on this they they allowed someone else to conduct the investigation I will. But before I get into this, I want to say that Doug Maurice of the Cleveland Plain Dealer of Cleveland.com um, reached out to the woman in question and she gave her side of the story. First, a lot of people mad at Doug about this. I'm not mad at Doug about this. I think that's what a good, responsible reporter does, even if I don't believe her, even if and I don't. And even if all of that, she still deserves to have her side of the story told. And she deserve uh, Doug did his job as a journalist. That's that's exactly what he should have done. And I'm going to say right now, I don't think he did her any favors. I read the thing in full. I don't you know, and I don't think he was trying to do her any favors. I think he reached out to her, asked her some questions and then put it out there, which, I, again, I think is exactly what he should have done. Even if she's completely wrong and even if she's completely lying. If Ohio State got their day in the court of public opinion, she deserves hers too. Even though I don't believe her. Um, Now, I'm sure the truth is probably somewhere in between what she has to say and what Ohio State has to say. But I'll also say that it's probably a lot, in my opinion, in my opinion, in my opinion, a lot closer to what Ohio State had to say. But I do encourage you to go seek out the first, just like read what Ohio State's report had to say. Read. Doug Maurice's thing on the Cleveland Plain Dealer. Come to your own opinions, but I believe the truth is significantly closer to Ohio State's version of the story. Uh, that being said, I have to say I'm insanely disappointed in, in a, a certain portion of Buckeye Nation for how they reacted to this. If your first reaction to this was, was she hot? How old was she? Please take a look at yourself. Gene Smith says the young people are vulnerable just because they are men doesn't mean they can't be prey. And thank you, Gene Smith. Thank you, Gene Smith, for saying this. And like I said, I'm just honestly really, really disappointed in a lot of people's reaction to this. Please keep in mind, we're talking about an adult woman, adult woman who was in some cases targeting minors. She was reaching out to high school recruits on National Signing Day acting as if she was a member, an actual masseuse licensed by the university. She was placing herself in a position of power. She was not actually in that power, but perceived power and actual power. There is no difference between the two. There is no difference. Let me say this again, between perceived power and actual power. Just because she's a woman, just because they are men, just because they were probably two or three times bigger than her does not mean she did not have power over them, even if that power was only perceived as power. What I think a lot of people don't understand is, one, even if she never made contact with any of those minors, that's still illegal. You don't actually have to make contact with a minor to be convicted for sexually propositioning a minor. So just so we're clear, she didn't actually have to touch any of them. Next point I want to make is. 
you know, there were play- you know, these players could have put a stop to this if they wanted. To. Some did. She had contact with, I want to say, 20 some players. Many of them never went back. Only five of them engaged per Ohio State's version of the story in any sort of sexual activity with her. Many didn't. Why did those five? Some of them may have felt. What you have to understand about manipulators, what you have to understand about predators is they have a large bag of tricks that they use to create power over a person. And what you also have to understand is that one of these players did feel bad enough about what happened to take it to the university. And kudos, by the way, to Ryan Day and the entire Ohio State organization that one of these players felt comfortable enough to go and say, I had sex with this woman. I don't feel good about it. I don't feel good about what she's doing. She's involving other players. We need to look into this. So kudos to to Ryan Day and the entire Ohio State organization, staff, athletic department for creating an atmosphere in which the player could. So like the players could have put an end to this anytime they wanted to. Then then why involve the university? Uh, Why involve the university when they could have, in theory, just walked away? You have to understand that, you know, guilt, blackmail, degradation, shame, dehumanization, gaslighting, groomers, abusers, manipulators have a large bag of tricks they use to control people. Perceived power and actual power, there is no difference. I just hope I I hope that none of the players did in any way feel victimized or coerced or, you know, whatever, however you want to phrase it, because. I I just don't want you to presume that they were okay with it then or now simply because, oh, they're 17 to 23 year old men. And of course, they just want sex, sex, sex all the time, no matter. That's that's a that's a gross generalization about where you think the average 19 ish year old is in their lives. Do you think that they're just going to have sex with anything that moves because they're a football playing young man and that they can't be victimized because they're a man. And I just, it, again, if your fir- if your first inclination, if your first question is, was she hot? Please just like swap the gender roles here. Please just swap the gender roles involved here and ask me if you're still going, well, was he hot? If a 40 some year old guy was engaging in sexual activity with a bunch of female athletes pretending he was a member of the university and you hear a story about that and actually ask yourself, is your first response to that? Was he hot? That's all I have to say about that. All right. I don't really have much. Just that it's just <laughs> it's a gross. It's just a, a gross story here. Uh, I'm glad that even I'm glad that this was caught now instead of this lingering on and on. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's all I want to say about that. It's just it's just gross. It's a gross um, story here. Her. Her license has been revoked, so that's right. That's a plus there, at least. So hopefully, she doesn't do no more harm to any other um, young folks. Yeah, um, I don't know if it's just men could be women too, but um, just gross overall. As she claims to have contact with quote many athletes, and okay. and I'm not saying Doug should have pursued what that meant, but at least according to the story. Uh, he didn't. Um, I'm not saying he should have, but that was her claim, one way or the other. All right, All right let's 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 move on to something more uplifting here, Jared. Let's <laughs> let's talk about recruiting. Yeah. Let's talk about recruiting. Yeah. Um, Ohio State currently has 12 members to their class. Uh, we talked a bit about Ryan Turner and Key Stokes last week. Uh, we talked about the class, sort of where it sits as a whole right now, number two in the nation. Um, being led, I, I would say, primarily through their three top 20 guys in Quinn Ewers, Jaheim Singletary, and uh, Ohio 
number one ranked in Ohio linebacker CJ Hicks. Um, don't even don't even leave out on Caleb Burton, a five star wide receiver as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, they're all great. Let's let's not. You know, I was, I was trying just not to read off all 12 names was what, what I was, I was trying just to going do off there. of the five stars there. OK, that's how good the class is doing right now that I was about to just not mention a five star. <laughs> yeah, you don't need us reading. It, off it's, it's it's the most it, currently right now. It's the team with the most five stars right now. The other, the other two are Georgia and LSU, each with three. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Georgia is currently the number one class. Yes, they're the ones that took the spot from Ohio State. Just barely. But yes. I, yeah, I, I put very little. Again, if we're talking like if you're in the top 10 right now, you're doing fine. Um, we talked a bit about last week, but the the rankings, the where we're looking at in the rankings right now, they're all screwed up. Just because the the junior, you know, the, the rising junior camps, the summer before junior year of football is where a lot of these rankings really sort of get their meat. Uh, there, none of those there's happened. A lot, there's a lot of players that's on Ohio State's team that did not play last fall, too. I should say like, there's a, there's a few that did not play. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So Ohio State has some uh, key visits coming up. Um, there's uh, June 1st and June 2nd. There's uh, some really highly touted uh, 2023 guys. We're not getting into 2023 today. We're sticking strictly to 2022. So just want to we're, we're, we're sticking 2022 in this episode. Uh, June 3rd, you do have cornerback Jaheim or Julian uh, Julian Humphrey uh, coming in on June 3rd. But Kyle, June 4th, June 4th is when it gets fun. Ooh. Yeah, June 4th, there are, how many we got here? Just eyeballing this, almost 20? 2, uh, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Yeah, about 20. About 20, maybe a little bit more than 20 recruits coming into Ohio State. Half of them already committed. And the other yeah. half, maybe, maybe? We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Hey, 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 <laughs> Nomad, we do Wendy's bags here. This is yes, Columbus. Yes, it's Wendy's. It is Columbus after all. It's wendy's yes we do wendy's bags here mm. you know give our right. kids so, McDonald's. so the player the players who are already we committed do baconators to i'd say players who are already committed that's coming on june 4th hicks <laughs> ewers powers burton grays uh benji bennett christian tegra uh brown and and kai stokes Kyle, I love the way you selectively just jumped the first I name a couple did, times yes. there. We're moving on, but we're moving on to the uh, to the ones who Kyle, are not commi- Kyle, are not committed. Kyle, Kyle, <laughs> Gosnell, I'm I'm that one's pretty close. If I'm if I'm missing it, it's only by a little bit. But Tegra Chibola, mm-hmm. it's just it's a ch, just that that tsh. It's a ch. It's exactly oh. how it sounds as long as you read that first as a ch to be fair jared yeah. i haven't gotten my official pronunciation guide from um from tom yet so uh we we need that i need to like reach out to like mark <laughs> or one of the recruiting guys over at the scoop and see if i can't get a pronunciation guide <laughs> all right you uh, want to handle the scoop by the way this the uh visit list here is is from buckeye scoop yes yeah. Uh, you want to handle the ones who are not committed? Yet? Yeah. Uh, guys visiting, not committed. Well, first, let me just say Derek LeBlanc and John Walker are visiting in that weekend as well. They are 2023 guys. We're not going to talk a lot about them. We're sticking to 2022. Okay. Uh, five star defensive end Amari Aber, Abor. I, I don't know. Guys, I don't know. If you came here looking for pronunciation, you were lost. Um, Zach Rice, I got that one. Uh, Amari Wagner, uh, and George Fitch, George Fitzpatrick, uh, they are all offensive linemen, uh, except for Amari. Amari is a defensive end. Uh, defensive tackle Dominic James, cornerback, uh, Toriano Pride, Xavier Nampa. I, I don't know. Uh, is a safety from Iowa. He's also visiting. 
and Zion Branch, uh, who is another safety who is visiting on June 4th. So that's the big recruiting weekend for for Ohio State. Um, it's I, I imagine we see a commitment come out of here somewhere. It It's it's that, 10 that is, yeah, that is, highly that is, touted guys who are already a member of the class and 10 highly touted guys who are not yet members of this class. I mean, I mean, just think about that. 10 of your 12 already committed uh, recruits coming that that weekend. Yeah. 10 of your 12. We don't care about the Red Sox, Nomad. No one cares about the Red Sox. <laughs> All right, Kyle, let's uh, let's do an exercise. I have compiled a list. Of how, how many do I have here? Is it 14? Is that right? Can you count this for me? Um, yeah, I, I do count 14. But before we get into that, though, Jared, why don't we why don't we hear from our sponsors first? That's, that's an early ad break, but probably a good call. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good break right there. Talk about, talk about the recruits and we're going to go more in depth about likelihood of who, who, according to Jared, might sign for Ohio State. Before we get into that though, let's hear from our good friends over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Oh, you, I, I thought you were going to give that one to yourself and then you flipped it and you gave it to me. Uh, let's see. The Rocco is a coffee over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. We told you why you should buy from the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Fair trade certified, veteran owned, Ohio based, all that stuff. Let's talk about let's talk about some coffee. Uh, let's see. We're going to talk about the Rocco, which is an Ethiopian natural process medium roast. Um, single origin coffee from the birthplace of coffee as we know it. Um, there's something really special, unique about an Ethiopian natural when it's at its best. Uh, and the Iron Bean Coffee Company is incredibly excited uh, to be bringing you such a uh, coffee. Who should drink this coffee? Uh, those who enjoy coffees that insist on being noticed. You have notes of tropical fruit, blueberry, watermelon, jasmine, uh, displaying a rich acidity, silky mouthfeel. Uh, this coffee is pleasingly exotic. Kyle, fun thing about the Rocco is that it is a medium roast. Unless, of course, you want it to be a dark roast because it's uh, it's the only coffee over at Iron Bean Coffee Company in which you can choose your roast. You can get it medium, you can get it dark. However you want to get it, you can get it. Uh, like I said, 100% uh, Arabica beans gives you the edge and confidence to slay your day. Uh, Iron Bean Coffee, that's uh, one of, like I said, you can get that one medium or dark roast. And there are so many other great coffees available over at Iron Bean Coffee. Um, including a bunch of flavored coffees, including a bunch of unflavored coffees. And if you're just sort of looking to find that one coffee that is yours, then I would check out. They have uh, singles where you can buy small bags, including the whole shebang, which is a sampler. Uh, you get a bunch of coffees. Uh, Twelve, as a matter of fact, fear no evil, the fierce integrity, the drink from the skull of your enemy, the Odin. The Dark Rocco, the Thor, the regular Rocco, the Ride and Die, the Cast Iron, the Rage Against the Dying of the Light, and the Loki all brought to you in uh, a small sampler bag. So you can find the one that uh, that speaks for you. All of that and more actually can be found at ironbeancoffee.com. It's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by our good friends over at the Bed Canadian Barbecue Company. Um, mentioned about some of the the box sets that you get get over at the Bad Canadian at the at the top of the show. Let me go into deeper dive into some of them here right now. Um, I want to go into what he classified as his ribs seasoning. Uh, first off, here is the Discord. Um, he says here, test, test, and test again with our good friends over at our Discord. Discord.com. Like yes. <laughs> um, it's 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 our mixture of the four horsemen but with a little blend that's fantastic um it has like a little sweeter base to it and it's great for chicken and ribs uh the 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 two border um it's a great maple sugar red pepper flake that's good on that actually the mac puts on his ribs and yep. his food truck um it gives it that crisp sweet flavor while that red pepper 
flake as that right amount of heat on that pork. You can go with the coffee and Q, which the coffee right into this coffee and Q is with our good friends over at the, over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Um, it's a blend of coffee and barbecue seasoning that offers the right about of coffee flavor and barbecue flavor. They'll add that something extra onto your food or the old fashioned here. Um, it's the most interesting spice, tries to mimic it, that classic bourbon drink. Um, and I believe they nailed it. Sweet, bourbony, and the right amount of bitter. Check out those and much, much more over at themadkinibbq.com. That is themadkinibbq.com. Use that promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off. Mad Kenny and Barbary Company, where they have your butt covered. Kyle, what would you know about what an old fashioned tastes like? As he know. reaches for his glass and takes a drink. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kyle. I have no idea. It's actually 16. I have 16 players here. Whew. I counted it while right. you were doing your ad read. 16 players here uh, who I believe at this point in time, based off of what we know, uh, are potentially the 16 most likely, or at least most wanted, most targeted players uh, by Ohio State right now. I have uh, listed them in order of who I think is most likely to sign with Ohio State when it's all said and done. All right, Jared, let's start off with one where his high school has a, has a at least the second part of the high school name. Um, it's a good name there. I'm um, talking about um, kid over at Center Grove High School in Greenwood, Indiana. Of course, we're talking about Caden Curry. Yeah, uh, Caden Curry, who's who's not a part of the June 4th bash, uh, I, I think is a as close of a shoe in as you can get for an out of state kid right now. I, I think that I feel very confident that he's going to end up signing with Ohio State. He's taking his time right now. He's going to take his visits and he absolutely should. And he's going to. But I, I feel very good that when it's all said and done, he signs for the Scarlet and Gray. Mm -hmm. um, 85th currently in the 24-7 composite ranking, eighth best in the country and third best athlete in our neighboring state of Indiana. Um, let's 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 jump on over. Jump on over to the border in our home state here, Ohio, more 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 in particular with Wayne High School. Emil Wagner, one of the top offensive tackles in the country. Yeah, Emil Wagner, Ohio State's looking to uh, add some depth, especially along the offensive tackle uh, part of the offensive line at the moment. Uh, I think Emil Wagner it will make a, a great member to this class. I feel like, again, kind of feels like another another guy where it might be a bit of a you know, I said we look at that June 4th and maybe a commitment comes out of it. If I had to pick one, I'm not saying he's going to, but if I had to pick one, if I had to pick one, there he is. Yeah. I mean, he has a size. He's 6'6". Six, six. Maybe maybe put on a little bit more pounds. He's at 250 oh, he right now. He, oh, yeah, he, he definitely will. But put on a little bit of pounds. And yeah, that's that's your that's your typical Ohio State lineman right there. Uh, 109th in the country, 10th best offensive tackle in the country, and third in the great state of Ohio. All right, next up, Jared here, uh, Kenyatta Jackson. Yep. Uh, down in Hollywood, Florida, which we just had a recruit yes. from Hollywood, Florida here. Same, same high school, same team. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, so, so what, what makes you what makes you so high on him coming to Ohio State? Well, you just nailed part of it. You know, you get a little bit of pressure from the teammate. Hey, Ohio State, Ohio State, Ohio State. Um, w when it comes to Kenyatta Jackson, I think his his list of offers and his list of serious candidates are who's who. It's it's the best teams in the country. Everyone wants this guy. Ohio State does have a bit of an advantage having a uh, a teammate in his ear. Uh, I think when it comes down to it, it's Larry Johnson, right? Who is better at putting defensive ends not only into the NFL, but basically fast tracking them to defensive rookie of the year in the NFL? Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Bosa, uh, Bosa and Young, all defensive rookies of the year. Yeah. 
I so when it comes down to it, you got a teammate who's going to be in his ear for Ohio State, and it's Larry Johnson. Mm-hmm. Um, Kenyatta is the 78th best in the country, fifth in his uh, position, and the 11th best in that state of Florida. It doesn't happen often, Kyle, with a kid who's ranked as high as 78 that I say, and he's underrated, but and he's underrated. All right. Uh, next up here, we have Xavier. I'm going to go with Nwankpa. Uh, Nwankpa. I, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Um, out of Iowa. Yeah. Going, going, going up. We, we don't really hear too much about Ohio State really going up that far in the Midwest, going upwards there to Iowa here. But yeah, Ohio State's really after this kid, in Xavier, uh, one of the best safeties in the country, uh, fifth best, according to the uh, composite rankings here. So tell me, a little, tell us a little about 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 Xavier here. Well, for one thing, the reason you don't see Ohio State going into Iowa too often is because there aren't uh, a lot of top 100 players from Iowa too often. You're talking about one of the best defensive backs, one of the best safeties, but yeah, one of the best defensive backs in the entire Midwest. And if you're one of the best defensive backs in the Midwest, your first stop is going to be Ohio State. Mm -hmm. Notre Dame's going to get a look. If you're from Michigan, a la Will Johnson, maybe Will Johnson gets a look, uh, or excuse me, maybe Michigan gets a look. But as far as any of that goes, it's uh, it's Ohio State. Notre Dame gets a look, and Michigan gets a look. Other teams get a look, but you're one of the best players in the Midwest. Your first stop's Ohio State, and there's a definitely mutual interest there. Uh, as you know, I'm going to keep coming back to this. He is a part of the June Fourth meet up the the Buckeye bash. Uh, so. I think this is another guy. I, again, if I had to pick. I, I think someone's going to commit during that June 4th visit. Wagner, I still am holding his, his number one spot, but if I'm going to hold number two, it's Xavier. Yeah, well. Maybe another kid who's really underrated, too. I mean, again, kind of kind of like with uh, with Kenyatta. I'm uh, still a top 100 recruit and you think that saying that he's underrated and you're like, is he really, if he's a top hundred, but if you go by the 24 seven sports, they yeah. think he's the 13th best and even the best safety in the country too. Yeah. Uh, 24 seven proper likes him a lot more than the composite ranking for sure. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Uh, next up here, Caleb Brown, uh, one of the top wide receivers here uh, out of Chicago, more specific St. Rita high school. Uh, 63rd best recruit from the composite rankings here. So there we go again, another top wide receiver, Ohio State's going after. And you're looking at it here and a lot of, a lot of crystal ball is really favoring Ohio State early on. Yeah. Especially when you get one from Wilt Fong, that always feels nice. Um, yep. It listening to Caleb Brown, you think basically it's between Ohio State and Michigan and Again, unless the kid's actually from Michigan, a la Will Johnson. I, you got to favor Ohio State. Michigan looks to be in, even by Michigan standards, Michigan looks to be in real bad shape right now. Harbaugh looks to be on loan. There are players transferring out at a rapid pace. Coaches are leaving. Our pets' heads are falling off. It's, it's, it's a real nightmare down there right now. Yeah, Mm -hmm. full program. uh, Nomad says down in the comments, full program rebuild. Why would anyone go to that dumpster fire right now? I don't know. By the way, I didn't include John. I've brought his name up twice already. I didn't include Johnson in this list because he's currently committed to Michigan, but I maybe should have. (laughs) Keep your eyes out. Keep your eyes out. Mm -hmm. All right. This 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 next one here, Jared, is really interesting just because of a. A current Ohio State player who's from that from Tennessee here. Yep. Uh, talking about um Dallin Dallin Hayden. Yep. Uh, out of Memphis, Tennessee. Um 22nd best running back in the country, fifth best in the country. Uh we we currently have Ohio State currently has a a really good running back right now in Master Teague. From Tennessee. From Tennessee, so 
here we go with another Tennessee running back. Yeah. And again, kind of this is kind of the same story with Hayden that you have with Caleb Brown. Except I, he, he's he is good. He's just not to the. Oh, he's uh, Kyle's responding to Nomad. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Nomad. Did you say really good? He, he is. He is really good. He had he didn't wasn't good last year, but that first year that I still think had, he was a lot better last year than people think he was. Mm-hmm. Look at the stats. It's. He he was he was doing he really was, well until he got a bit banged up, missed some time. And mm-hmm. I don't even know if they used I. Steel, I'm not saying steel ch- or not steel chambers. Um, I'm not saying Master Teague's the best running back on the roster. I'm not saying that. I am saying that he gets a lot more hate than he deserves from the fans, and he's a lot better than the fans think he is. Again, I'm not saying he's the best running back on the team. I'm not saying he's going to get the most carries this year. I'm not saying he's going to get the most yards this year. I'm not saying any of that. I am saying that the hate, uh, Matthew Berry, uh, back in the day, like, Golden era podcasting, uh, Matthew Barry and his uh, fantasy football podcast that he used to have on ESPN. They always had a phrase on there that says, I get it, but the hate has gone too far. And that's where we are with Master Teague right now. The hate has gone too far. I get why people feel the way they do, but the hate has gone too far. Way too far. Yep. But OK, back to D- uh, Dallin Hayden. Same story here that you have with Caleb Brown, just substitute. Anytime we said Michigan, put Tennessee in there. Why? Why would you go to players are leaving Tennessee? They're getting in line to get the hell out of Tennessee. Now, maybe he sees that and he sees playing time as opposed to being behind two amazing freshmen who signed with Ohio State last year. And maybe that plays into it. Maybe his best option is a different third option. But I don't know why anyone would anyone who has good, better options would go to Tennessee right now. Heck, one of one of Tennessee's best players just transferred out. Yeah, to a to a, in a uh, suspicious situation. Yeah. All right. All right. Moving on, Jared. Um, Amari Arbor, Arbor, excuse me. There's Abor? no R in front of that yeah. A there or after that A there. Uh, Guys, one once again, the- we don't know how to pronounce names here. Uh, Omar, I'm, I'm going to try that one more time. Omari Aber. I'll go with Aber. Um, I think one it's of a, the I, te- I'm, I've heard it said, and I'm pretty sure it's a short A, but whatever. We, we aren't going to uh, get one, it today. One, one we of, aren't good at One of the, the best defensive ends in the country. The, se- the second, according to the composite here. Uh, another kid out of Texas here. Hostet just had really good success in Texas here. I'm really curious now. I know we said this. Five years ago, um, when a certain coach um, was the head coach at Texas, and now with um, with another new coach in Texas, how will Ohio State adjust now? How will Ohio State adjust now to be able to pick these recruits out of Texas? It's Texas is the gift that keeps on giving. It's like, well, they have a new coach now. (laughs) It just we get to repeat that story every three years. It's fantastic. And and every coach is the coach, by the way. Every single one's the coach. Uh, Nomad asks about Ohio State targeting the transfer out of USC. Uh, maybe I I don't. I'm. I think that's a decent possibility, um, but I I don't have a great feel for it one way or the other. Um, but but back to Aber. I I don't know. Back. Uh, he is. He was, or ra- rather, he was considered an Oklahoma lock for a very long time. And the idea that he's an Oklahoma lock is fading and it's fading hard. I don't know. Again, <laughs> I don't know why you'd be a defensive, a specifically a defensive player and go to Oklahoma. There, there, I said it. Offensive player. Yeah, I get that. Go be a quarterback, a wide receiver, an offensive lineman, uh, whatever at Oklahoma. Yeah, go, go. Go, mm-hmm. go do that. A hundred percent. I think if you're a quarterback, you, your first two options need to either be play for Lincoln Riley or play for Ryan Day. I think those are your first two looks. But on the defensive side of the ball, why would you go to Oklahoma? 
Uh, but there's he's, couple, he's there's really a couple, he's great. There's a couple of names here that's also like that here, but we'll get to it when it comes here. Uh, to answer your question, Nomad, where where did that coach land? Uh, he's actually with the Bears right now. Tom Herman. He's, a, he, he's with. He's an offensive analyst. He doesn't even have a coaching position. He's just an well, analyst right now. Because if he, because he's still collecting that Texas money, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. So he's gonna take like just like a low key gig and. Uh, let's see. And also, like, it's going to be really hard to, uh, I think he probably should stick to the NFL. I don't know how many parents want their kids going anywhere near him. He should probably stick to the NFL. All right. All right. Moving on here. Marvin Jones Marvin, Jr. Yes. Uh, kid out of Fort, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. One of, here we go. Another defensive yeah. end here. Uh, number four, uh, weak side defensive end in the country. Yeah. Uh, I feel, I feel good. Not great. About Marvin Jones Jr., we've already mentioned a ton of defensive ends here, and Ohio State only has room for so many. Uh, you know, the whole team of, can't be defensive ends, <laughs> right? So, you know, this is our third defensive end we've mentioned already. Um, if you put a gun to my head and say, you know, if they took two of these guys, or you know, who's if I, you know, I, I'm actually going to disagree with what I said. Because I, I did list Jones behind, but now that I think about it a little bit more, I think maybe Jones is slightly more likely. Um, but yeah, I think Jones and Jackson, I think, are probably the defensive ends I'm looking at right now. But I definitely feel the best about Jackson among the three of them. Okay. All right. Um, moving along here, Jerry. Let's move a little bit quicker here. But um, Addison Nichols, uh, another offensive tackle. This one out of Norcross, Georgia, the number three guard in the country in the 2022 class. Yeah. Uh, when it, I, I feel like there's mutual interest here. Um, he's maybe a guard. He's maybe a tackle. It just sort of depends upon who you're asking. Um, I, I think Ohio State would love to have him. I think that Coach Stud has had issues landing highly touted offensive linemen this far from home. Yep. Um, and you're going to hear me say that same thing when we get down to Zach Rice in a few spots. Um, I, Ohio State would love to have him. I, Ohio State's not done great this far from home on highly touted offensive linemen. So that's why he's as far down on the list as he is. Okay. Uh, Toriano Pride. Out yep. of St. Louis, Missouri. There's another kid out of St. Louis that Ohio State had has had some success out of. Yeah. And, you know, you, you almost again, you almost feel like St. Louis is the pipeline for Ohio State. Uh, but Clemson's in play here. And, you know, you always have to respect Clemson in a recruiting battle. Uh, there's mutual interest all around with Ohio State, with Clemson. Uh, what really hurts Ohio State's chances here more than anything else is that you have a Steve Wilfong eight confidence in a crystal ball sitting on Clemson right now. And it's just, it's hard to disagree with one of the best in the business. And I'm certainly not going to. Yep. Uh, next up here, George Fitzpatrick, uh, a just inside of the top 300 here. So barely just getting that fourth star here. Uh, offensive tackle out of way out. Speaking of of offensive tackles, Jared, away from the the motherland state, way out in Colorado. Yeah, I wanted to include include uh, Fitzpatrick in this list. Uh, he's not actually a name I had heard a ton about until he was added to the June fourth date. Not a guy, like I said, not a guy I know a ton about. Um, if you're if you're looking for a a guy that's maybe a little bit more realistic for Ohio State, if you know Nichols and Zach Rice are are pipe dreams, if those are the goals for Ohio State, then you know George Fitzpatrick might be a little bit more of a realistic option. If if you're not picking up a commitment from, or if you're not feeling like you're going to pick up a commitment from Rice or Nichols. Okay. Um, you mentioned Zach, you mentioned Zach Rice here. Yeah. The top offensive tackle in the country here out yeah. of Lynchburg, Virginia. That's a tough place to try to get out of. I mean, you got, you got a lot of 
I mean, Virginia, yeah. right there. That's more importantly, North Carolina and Clemson and Georgia and yeah, it's 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 ACC and SEC territory for sure. And yes. again, we've not seen Stud have great success this far away from Ohio with this highly touted of a guy. I'd love to have him. Ohio State would love to have him. I just don't see it happening. Okay. Uh, moving on here, uh, Dominic James, defensive tackle out of Bradenton, Florida. Again, well, more specifically, the IMG Academy. Yep. When you hear Bradenton, Florida, you know we're talking about the IMG Academy. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Kyle, we're, we're probably going to have to sort of move quickly through these last four. We're running short on time. Um, All right. The la- the, okay, then the last one. Defensive one tackle, have, incredibly talented. Ohio State's absolutely in play. It's just it's just very early to say right now. I probably have him too far down on this list now that I think about it a tad more. All right. And the last ones here is uh defensive end um Inai White, yes. safety uh Zion Branch, and cornerback Austin Jordan, um Pennsylvania, Nevada, and Texas. Yeah, when it comes to these guys, I think, again, high interest all around, you know, between them and Ohio State and Ohio State and them. Um, I just feel like Ohio State is behind other schools right now. Um, and I white with Penn State, among others, uh, Branch with USC, Jordan with Oklahoma. I mean, I'm not saying Ohio State can't make this up. Um, Branch. For example, I know is visiting Ohio State. Um, is he a part of the? Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's a part of the June 4th crew that's coming in. So don't count out Ohio State, but USC definitely has a lead right now. Mm-hmm. And I mentioned earlier about like defensive um, players in Texas looking at Oklahoma, Austin Jordan, um, one of the top corners, the 10th, um, or they. 24-7 has him as a safety, the 10th best safety in the country here, but everything's looking to go to Oklahoma's way with him. Right. And as far as, I mean, Ohio State will probably end up doing better. Ohio State's having a lot of success recruiting defensive backs right now. Ohio State will probably do better. Mm-hmm. And then Jared mentioned about um, Inai White uh, right there in Philadelphia. Backyard there for Penn State, the second best weak defensive end in the country, best in that state of Pennsylvania there. As Jared said with these uh, these last few recruits, it's if Ohio State really wants them, it's it's an up uphill battle for them. Yeah. All right, uh, real quick, we're about to jump in the Ask Sloopcast questions, but uh, Nomad dropped, I'm going to say a special one in here um, mm-hmm. from Nomad. Uh, In prep for our move back to the motherland, he's never lived in Ohio. Little Nomad wants to know what is the best traditional Ohio State watching food to have? So, Kyle, what's what would you say is the most traditional thing for an Ohio State fan to eat while watching Ohio State football? You you know what? You know what? One of the great things about living in Columbus was, Jared. What's that? Columbus was one of the like hubs of just variety of food. You see yeah. a lot of just starter. You see a lot of starter up um, restaurants in Columbus. You honestly can't go wrong with anything in Columbus. There's a lot of great variety. Like one of my favorite things that I miss, Jared, is Piata. It's like an Italian version of Chipotle. I miss that place. That, that's that was an excellent place to go. Um, is that a is that a is that a like food to watch Ohio State games? Maybe not, but well, I'll just I'll throw this out here since Kyle's avoiding the question. <laughs> <laughs> I would say wings, brats, and and ribs with some with some <laughs> mad Canadian seasoning on it. <laughs> yeah, I feel like any sort of any sort of sausage, whether it be a brat or an Italian sausage, I think you're good to go. Um, 
wings are definitely high tradition when it comes to sort of watching Ohio State football. Uh, and then especially once the weather, of course, y'all are used to that Southern y'all y'all used to that Southern weather. So you, even you think the weather will have quote unquote turned in September. We're, we're, we're still wearing shorts in September, but you, you'll, you'll get there. Um, once the weather turns chilly, September football, not so much with the chilly yet. Oh, you get into that mid October football we're we're going chilly now. Oh, that especially that beginning November time. Mm. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Peak chilly, peak chilly. So early football season, probably wings and sausages, because that's what you're putting on the grill later in the football season after we've all retreated indoors. Chilly. And I want to I want to emphasize homemade chili. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no other, no other um, chili known restaurants in southern Ohio that we will not name. Okay. All right. All right. Let, let's let's go real quick here to the Ask Sloopcast questions. Um, Nomad with a couple of questions here. With the house with the wide receiver room stacked, over under on Rucker to getting 500 yards receiving. Over. Over. You're over. Tight over. End, over. Baby. Buy stocks on Rucker right now. You got a new quarterback coming in. New quarterbacks and look at Justin Fields at in Chicago right now. Go to your tight end. Yeah. Go to your tight end. You got a big, talented tight end in Ruckert there. Find, find some weak spots in those zones. Curl up. Good matchups against, let's say it's slow Big Five. Ten linebackers. Buy stocks in Ruckert now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, what is the history of Manchester United and Red Devils? I have no idea. Not a clue. Next. Sorry. I don't know either. <laughs> uh, Stuart underscore U4 E, not U, E4 US vet. Uh, should high end recruits commit to Alabama first to get their car <laughs> then use the one transfer time road to commit to, to the highest bidder for pocket money or the other way around? Uh, I, I First off, your, hum, your humor is noted and appreciated. Uh, second, <laughs> uh, Tony and Tom had a really good discussion this week on their podcast. I'll go ahead and plug that real quick. The Buckeye Weekly. Like, does Ohio State benefit from the transfer portal? It was basically the, the question of the podcast. And I always say yes, because you're Ohio State and like the rich just get richer. So whatever the rule change is, Ohio State will position themselves to best take advantage of it. So, yep. yes, will always be the answer to that question. Um, mm -hmm. I do think that what one of the top reasons why a player doesn't go to a top tier program, you know, top tier, let's say Bama, Clemson, Ohio State, maybe a couple other in that next sort of bubble area, right? Those are your three programs. The number one reason a highly talented guy doesn't go to one of those programs is because they might be worried or concerned about getting playing time. Well, with the one time transfer rule in place, you can do what like Jack Miller and CJ Stroud have done and say, yeah, we'll both commit to the same class. One of us will win. The other one will transfer. Ohio State wins. And by the way, if it turns out that your couple, if like your your Matthew Baldwin and your Tate Martell don't work out, well, then you just go get a Justin Fields. <laughs> we'll just go get a Justin Fields real quick. Yeah. All right. Uh, our homie sent car 19. In hindsight, should Fickle have taken that that Sparty job? I'd say no. No, absolutely not. No. No, I, I, I think Nomad right says, now, watch Band of Brothers, you heathens. I've seen Band of Brothers. What are you talking about? Um, regarding to Suncard here, um, I think I honestly think Fickle, the way that he's coaching, the way that he's recruiting right now, he's going to he's going to be able to get a better job than Sparty. There's a lot of better jobs than Sparty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Nomad asks me, not ask Sloopcats, but asks Kyle. Mm -hmm. One and a half cups of coffee for Jared he says on pots. Monday. Pots of coffee. Pots. One and a half pots of coffee on Monday. Uh, I'll go with under. I think Jared just makes one cup, one pot, and 
yeah. whether he drinks it or all. So I'm, I'm going to go with the under then. Okay. First off, Kyle's right. But <laughs> I also went to the gym that morning and had pre-workout and then had a pot of coffee. So if you're talking pure caffeine intake, it's over. <laughs> it's over then. Yeah. Buckeye Zach and, asked. And how the much matter all. All right, Jared. Here's a question for both of us. How much bourbon can you drink in one sitting? I'm, I'm one glass. I don't like to. I, I very rarely get like properly drunk anymore. I'm, I'm too old for that. I, I like to get a good buzz going. So it's, yeah. it's how much can I? I don't know. I don't. I'm not in the business of finding that question out anymore. Um, Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sticking to one. I'll put it to you that way. Well, I had two. So. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Um, what other questions do you want to answer here? Nomad Jared? asks, is KJ Hill the best slot wide receiver in Ohio State history? Ooh. Yes. I'm I, gonna say I, that's, yes. That's a good question. I mean, I mean, you could definitely argue that uh, has the most was it reception yard? Receptions? Was it? Is that the record he has? I think it's the most receptions. Was it receptions or receptions yards, or was it both? I forget. Uh, I, I feel I feel like an idiot not knowing that right, it might be both. <laughs> right now. Um ugh, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to look real quick here, but another another name there that you can think of. Um what what's another what's another slot receiver that you can think of, Jared? Well, it's weird because a lot of the Ohio State slot receivers were just regular wide receivers, they were they were outside wide receivers waiting their turn while playing slot whereas kj hill felt just like a proper slot wide receiver um curtis samuel uh, nomad says curtis samuel i feel like curtis samuel it was like the most you know when urban meyer first came to columbus we talked a lot about the percy harvin role the percy harvin role curtis samuel best embodied what that was whereas he was playing both running back and wide receiver which, you know, a lot of people are up in arms that Urban Meyer is trying to do that with ETN in Jacksonville right now. And I'm like, no, nah, it'll be fine. Well, why would you draft ETN if you were just going to make him a wide? He's going to he's going to be both. It'll be fine. Trust me. <laughs> anyone who remembers Percy Harvin, anyone who remembers Curtis Samuel is not concerned about what Urban Meyer is attempting to do with Travis ETN right now. Another another name here. I mean, I'm I'm all for like. Especially that mid late two thousands Buckeyes teams, yeah. Anthony Gonzalez was he a true like slot wide receiver? Because I mean, who is who is on the outside of him? I <laughs> I understand, but then did he like, for lack of a better term, he graduate had, had to two, an outside wide receiver after that? He had two stellar wide receivers on the outsides. He was an he was a he was a slot receiver. Okay, so yeah, we can throw Anthony. <laughs> That's Gonz right. That's representative Gonzalez to you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that that a whole other thing, Kyle. Um, I sure we can put Anthony Gonzalez in there, but I'm I'm sticking with KJ Hill. All right, and yes, it was receptions. He has the most receptions at Ohio State. Okay, Sur surpassing David, the great David Boston. There you go. Uh, Nomad, once again, getting a lot of these questions in here. Uh, over under on the number of noon kickoffs Ohio State should have in a season. I'm 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 fine with it. Plus, this is what guys I ever sure. why why is the Ohio State or well by the way like why is the Ohio State Oregon game oh god what did I just do to my hair on at noon? <laughs> um, if okay, first off, this is what Fox is doing and will be doing they want they don't want their premier game going up against they want to own the noon time slot this is how they want to beat game day they want yep. the people who are going to watch the noon game to also watch the pregame show yep this is their strategy they basically are trying to own that 10 a.m to 3 30 p.m time slot and if you're trying to own that time slot the feather in your cap is going to be Ohio State. So stop getting outraged that such and such games at noon. If this is what Fox is doing in Fox in the way Fox's strategy is. This is a compliment. Yes. And that's why I said over because of that reason there. 
Uh, by the way, though, what is your- by the way, just real quick. The, all of that being said, it is kind of pissy for Oregon to have to yeah. travel three time zones and then play at what is 9 a.m. for them. That's anyone who follows uh, sort of the gambling lines in the NFL knows what happens when a West Coast team has to travel east and play a a one o'clock kickoff on the East Coast. It's mm-hmm. it's death. It, it's worth a couple points per Vegas. Yep. <laughs> I'm not I'm not I'm not disagreeing with you, Nomad, um, but it's not fair. All right. Let's have a let's have a little fun here with Sun Card. Favorite team in each of the five power of the each of the power five conferences. Favorite team. So yeah. so like Ohio State. All right, um, let's 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 go with the ACC here. Uh, Do you know? Well, I, you weren't going to include Notre Dame, but don't include Notre Dame. <laughs> I, I I don't, don't do I like any of them. Uh, Miami, I guess. I don't know. I don't. I don't. Maybe I, I, I'm really judging you by saying that right now. I, I don't have Miami. Miami. I go with the T. I go with the. The team that's similar colors there. I'll go with the wolf pack. I see. If I was if I was gonna pick someone from your uh adopted hometown, it would it would probably be the Tar Heels personally. Okay. But I, I just cause just because that's a really nice shade of blue. That's 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 it. That's the entirety of it. Well, that's they call it North Carolina blue. Uh Big 12 conference. Uh why I don't like this question. I don't like this exercise. I don't like. I don't. I don't like any of these teams. And I tell you what, Big Twelve. I, I, whoever's playing Baylor, you know, I just want because Baylor they always, they always see they oh, Nomad's got it. Uh, whoever I do like Iowa upset, State. Whenever right there's now. an upset, it's the Cyclones. I do like <laughs> Iowa State. Right and they were now. they were my team last year. <laughs> They were my team last year. Yeah, that's right. The weather team. Yes. I, the, the Cyclones, I had them as one of the top Big 12 teams, and I was right. <laughs> I, I do like I, I do like the current version of Iowa State because it's it's coached by a bunch of Mount Union guys. So from that perspective, yes, Iowa State. But it's only because of that. It's not because I care about Iowa State. Pac-12. I still don't care. <laughs> I mean, like USC is the traditional the power. So USC, Oregon has that cool factor. Washington State has one of the coolest logos ever designed. Uh, so Washington State probably gets some love for that. Um, I, Sun I, Devils I, I, is a cool name, and they and they always seem to have really cool uniforms. So I, I'm going to go with the, I'm going to go with this team just because I like the mascot. Go with the Huskies. See, that's another good answer. With the Huskies. All right. And our favorite conference, Jared. Our favorite conference. That's that wasn't a that wasn't a question. You S, the SA say. Oh, from from the SEC. Um, from the SA say. Vanderbilt. <laughs> oh, I've always growing up, I was always like just because of my high school, the Bulldogs. I always yeah. liked the Bulldogs. I, I may still stay, say I still like the Bulldogs, even though they can never get over that hump. But I, I may just stick with the Bulldogs. So I'm going to stick with Vanderbilt. All right. All right. That was fun. Um, all right. Let's, well, so- let's pick one more. One last question from Buckeye Zach here, Jared. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, all right. Here, this is a good one. Over under, how badly do the Buckeyes beat the snot out of Penn State and Michigan? And then he says a combined score differential of 132. Uh, a that's high. a bit high. <laughs> bit high. It's a even bit high. Sub- even if you subtract that, or even if you divide that by two, that's still high. Well, no, but that, I think that's what he's saying. It's a combined point differential. Well, yeah. I know, yeah. Even oh. if you divide that point <laughs> confidential by two, it's still a little high. <laughs> it's it's the, it's still a little high. <laughs> uh, no, I don't. I don't. No, no, Matt. I don't really like any teams in that in that state. There. No. Uh, even though they, even though they're the Bulldogs, I, I don't, I don't acknowledge them. This is a good. 
way too early prediction for the final four teams, the playoff teams. You went, it's just, just shits and giggles. This one's also from Buckeye Zach. You know, let's, let's do it. Cause first and foremost, I think it's easy enough just to say <laughs> Bama, Ohio State, Clemson. And then just pick one. <laughs> yeah. And Nomad uh, picks Oklahoma, <clears throat> which I think is probably the safest. Just it, that's the evergreen playoff prediction. Is it not? Oh, wait a minute. You said UNC. UNC. He did say UNC. The Tar Heels, Jared. Yeah, but the evergreen, the evergreen prediction is Ohio State, Bama, Clemson, Oklahoma. You could just say that every year and it's never going to sound crazy. Yeah, Bama, Ohio State, Clemson, and... And then pick a fourth one. The default fourth one feels like Oklahoma. Yeah. But you could say Notre Dame. You could say Georgia. You could say... Yeah, you're probably not saying USC quite yet. Not Um, yet. Okay. All right, that's it, Jared. That is it for today's episode. All right, Kyle. Uh, hey, everyone, we're running over. So go to the sloopcast.com. Fick, just pick a link. Pick a link somewhere in there. Click it and see what happens. Kyle, anything in Kyle's corner? Um, Honestly, I don't. I, I always like to, especially this time, this time of the year, I like to talk about the crew, but we're mad at the crew right now. We're mad at the crew. We Not are. The crew. We are we're mad at with, the Columbus at, SC. We love the crew. We love the crew. We're mad at Columbus SC. Mm-hmm. Yes. So there we're we're fighting, I think is what All we're right. trying to say. All right, let's let's end let's end the episode, Jared. Okay. Uh yeah, uh tonight's ending music, uh brand new song from a band who we have played on this Kyle, that's been empty for the last couple tries. There's a little bit that's, left. You can't see it because it's hiding in the orange there. It's it's a little bit left. <laughs> that's been empty for a while now. Uh Played them on the show a few times. The name of the band is Settle Your Scores. They're a pop punk band out of Cincinnati. They just signed to a new record label. They just released a new song. The name of that song is 1999. We'll be playing uh, that band and that song. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink a local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Settle Your Scores. Hey, Michigan Bucknut, we super duper appreciate you saying Miami of Ohio, but that is, they are not from a Power Five conference. <laughs> Ooh, that felt mm. nice. Oh, I thought I was going to type something. Um, anything you want to mention here, Jared, to our listeners? No, I'm, 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 I'm tapping out. I'm done. <laughs> I got I'm nothing tapping. else. You're tapping out. I'm tapping out. I'm done. I've, I've said, I've said everything I feel like I need to say this episode. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and what? Let's go ahead and... Michigan Bucknut being a smart ass. Never. Never. All right. Let's, let's go ahead and end the episode, Jerry. Once again, we'd like to thank Settle Your Scores for ending today's episode. And once again, we would like to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's episode. Let's see. We talked about why you should buy from the Iron Bean Coffee Company. We did that. Uh, we talked a bit about the Rocco. So let's let's jump into another one. Uh, let's jump into the Fear No Evil. The Fear No Evil is a black roast. It's not even a dark roast, Kyle. It is a black roast. We took our high, I'm speaking directly for the Iron Bean Coffee Company here. We took our highest quality, most floral Arabica beans and carefully roasted it to the brink of flames. We monitor it with all five of our senses to ensure that this rich black coffee roast is void of all light, the sheen like polished armor, the feel like cocoa butter, smooth. The smell is smoky, exotic, and rich. The taste is bold from a diverse geographic patchwork of 
sedimentary rocks and volcanic. This is there's a lot of big words in this. <laughs> we coax the bean along from the razor's edge straight into the valley of death. Courage flows from the fractured husk in the form of aromic oils, providing the protection against hell's flames. We give you the fear. No evil. Wow. I, by the way, real quick, that was beautiful. I don't know who writes these for the Iron Bean Coffee Company, but that is a work of art of a description. That is beautiful. I love it. Why? Every, this is why I like the Iron Bean Coffee Company so much. They don't just make great coffee and they don't just make coffee doing everything like the morally upstanding way. They also just do all the little things right. The bags, the artwork, all beautiful. The mugs are beautiful. The writing on the website is beautiful. The design of the website is beautiful. This company does everything right. How can you not want to support these people by going to ironbeancoffee.com? That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by a good friend over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Talked about some of the seasonings over with the ribs. Let's do something different, Jared. What about our vegetables? Oh, okay. Yes, vegetables need some loving too. Uh, I pick, I picked from here because there, there's a lot of seasons that you could add with vegetables. You can pretty much everything that the Mad Kid Eating has. But let me let me pick some that I I don't really talk too much about. Um, first off, the the Mad Hatter. Mad Hatter. It's a salty citrus pepper blend. It's great for those that love salt with a kick. It's a great, it's a great finishing salt or even to rim the class of glass off of your Bloody Mary. Um, or you can go with the Ope. Smoke the mid. You're in the, you're in the Midwest there. Why not? Um, <laughs> he says here, in the Midwest, we have two, con- <laughs> we have two consistents, cornfields and ranch dressing. And that's what the Ope is here. Um, it's the Mad Canadian's twist on it. It has that smoked ranch blend destined to make your guests say, let me just squeeze by uh, and get some more of that barbecue. <laughs> I love that, Mad Canadian. <laughs> love that. Um, third one here, the Brits blend, Jared. It's a, it's a great um, mixed spice made, used by Mrs. Mad Canadian herself when she makes chili. It's a great chili blend. has a great amount of heat and the savory. It goes great with with your famous chilly mornings, mainly for those mid October, early November chilies that we mentioned earlier. Uh, it's, it goes well with potato salads as well, as Mad Canadian says. And the last one here, Jared, the savory. I think savory is one that I don't talk too much here, but I'm going to give it some love here. Um, it's the exact seasoning that they put on their pulled pork. Um, it's salty, savory mix that is sure to be a favorite. On your next barbecue. Those are just a few of the many seasonings over at the MadKinneyBBQ.com. Again, MadKinneyBBQ.com. Be sure to use that promo code SLOOPCAST10 for 10% off your entire order when ordering all of your seasonings. Mad Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. 